Praise the Lord. I threatened him. I actually, when he told me he was going to introduce me, I threatened him. I said, just say Donna Neville. <laughs> let's get, let's, listen, I know it's been long. Why don't you guys just all stand up? Let's stand up. And let's just take a moment right now and just lift our hands together, amen, and just worship the Lord right there in your seats. Hallelujah. Without the aid of music, I want you guys to just begin to lift your voices and begin to worship the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. Lord, what a joy it is to be with your people, to be in your house. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Lord, we declare, Lord, better is one day in your house than thousands elsewhere. Oh, God, we love you. Lord, we praise you. Oh, Lord, we're praising you tonight. We thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Lift your voices, folks. Lift your voices. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Begin to lift your voices. Hallelujah. And praise him. Praise him in this place. Hallelujah. We glorify you, Lord. We glorify you, Lord. We glorify you. Be glorified. Be glorified, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let all of the other names fade away, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And Lord God, we lift up your name, your name, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. We thank you. Lord, we love you. We love you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, I just pray right now in the name of Jesus some healings, some healings that I believe that the Lord just dropped into my heart, that, he, that, that the word bruised just kept coming to me. I was reminded, I believe it's the King James Version where, where in Isaiah 61, where it says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel, to heal the brokenhearted, heal the bruised, those that are bruised, those that are oppressed. And that word bruised dropped into my spirit as they were having the prayer meeting out here just before the service. And I feel like that there's people in this building tonight and that there's bruises. You're functioning. You know, you love God. You're, you're effective. You know, nothing wrong in your lifestyle. But some things, maybe in your life, things that have happened, just left sore spots. There's just those places in your, that are, that are underlying, those painful places that, that every once in a while, those places are touched and it leaves you in pain. There's a pain that is underlying, and I don't know who you are. I don't know all that that refers to, but if that's you, just I, I want everyone to just begin to pray and just lift your hands, amen. If that's you and you say, I've got some bruises, there's some bruises. Those things are still hurting. They're sore. There's just these sore spots. I've forgiven. I've let things go, but those things keep being touched and they hurt. Lord, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, I praise you, Lord God, that you're the healer this evening. You're the healer, Lord. You came, Lord God, to touch those bruises, those underlying, Lord, those deep, Lord God, layers, Lord God, Lord, in our lives, Lord God, that different things, people, disappointments, heartaches, Lord God, Lord, have left us sore. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, healing move throughout this congregation in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you would move, Lord God, and heal, Lord God. I pray that you will take some people by surprise tonight. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray you move by your spirit in the name of Jesus and lift, oh God, Lord God, that morning, God. Lift, oh God, the spirit of heaviness in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We pray that you move, Lord, over us, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Bring order, God, back again to our hearts, our minds, our direction. Lord, some, Lord God, that are in this building, Lord God, tonight, Lord God, Lord God, that there's a, the, the, they're functioning in confusion, but in the name of Jesus, I pray that a clarity, a clarity will move throughout this congregation right now on lives, on ministries. Hallelujah. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that you will cause focus 
focus to come once again, Lord, into some lives, Lord God. Lord God, the Lord that are that are, Lord, hungry, they're moving, they're working, God, but there's something, Lord God, Lord, that is no longer focused. God, I pray that you bring that focus again in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and begin to praise him. Hallelujah, Lord, we worship you. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you, Jesus, that you're the healer tonight. Lord, heal broken hearts in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Some people, Lord God, that are here, oh God, they're functioning, God, with brokenness, oh Lord God. Lord God, I pray now in the name of Jesus that the ministry of the Messiah, Lord God, when you read, Lord God, that scripture, you said today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. You were declaring that you were the Messiah, the healer of broken hearts. And I pray now that the ministry, Lord, of healing move throughout this congregation and that you move in broken hearts, Lord God. Lord God, people that put on really good faces, Lord God, because we feel like we're honoring you to do that, the Lord God, by not showing pain. Lord God, Lord, we're afraid that we're not walking in faith, God, if we're showing any kind of pain or hurt. But Lord, there's people that are in here. I know that their hearts are broken, wounded. I pray healing in the name of Jesus. Healing, move up and down these aisles in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah begin to worship him right now begin to worship him begin to worship him hallelujah thank you lord thank you jesus hallelujah 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 lord we thank you lord we love you and we praise you we praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand clap. Aren't you thankful for him tonight? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, God bless you. I promise to preach short. I really do. Actually, this is short. I'm pretty sure it's short. Amen. Hallelujah. So I will just drop on you real quickly what the Lord had given me for this conference. Amen. And since I was asked to do this, I'm going to honor that. Praise the Lord. And I am privileged to be here. Thank you, Pastor Mestis and your wife, Josie, for inviting me to come. And, and wonderful. I see a lot of people that I've run, run into through the years. Our lives have crossed paths at different intersections in our lifetimes. And I am just so thankful for that. It's a treasure doing the journey together, isn't it? I'll tell you what, there's nothing like it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So let's dive in from garden to garden, from the fall to the cross and beyond. I want you to think with me for just a minute about the creation story. Creation was perfect. Humans were perfect. Well, after the woman came on the scene. Their provisions were perfect. Their environment was perfect. Even the presence of the snake demonstrated God's perfect love by proving that God created us, free will, moral agents. Adam and Eve were not puppets. They were not drones. They could make their own decisions. Absolutely nothing to complain about. We know the story. Satan tempted. Eve listened. She was deceived, meaning that she believed the lie. Adam went along, and it all added up to disobedience. And in that tragic moment in time, the representative humans, the ones who had been given dominion, they had been given rule, handed it over to Lucifer, thereby giving him dominion over humans born from that point forward. But God, amen, would you say that with me? But God, I just love that phrase, those two words. But God stepped into that broken situation and he began a movement, a movement that started at the fall and concluded at the cross. And in a nutshell, the Garden of Eden was the place of disobedience 
But the Garden of Gethsemane was the place of obedience. When Jesus said, Father, not my will, but your will be done, and he turned his face towards the cross, that paramount event in all of history. At the cross, the power of sin was defeated. Death no longer has a sting. Hallelujah. The promise that was made in the Garden of Eden was fully accomplished at the cross. And with his dying breath, our Messiah, our Lord and Savior exclaimed, It is finished. It is finished. And beyond the cross, God began to build his church and prepare his bride. Hallelujah. That's where we're at. That's where we're at. And in between those two gardens, we that are on this side of the cross have the ability to look back and see the movement of God through history. The movement of God through history. At the fall, God made a promise. And at the cross, God fulfilled that promise. When pronouncing the curses, you guys know it, know this verse. Amen. The Lord told Satan when he was handing out those curses in Genesis 3.15, he said, And I will cause hostility between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. He will strike your head and you will strike his heel. And as we know, that promise was a long time coming in real time. But to watch how it unfolded through the lens of time, generations, and history serves only to strengthen our confidence in the sovereignty, wisdom, faithfulness, goodness, and power of God to keep his word. I don't know about you, that was the word that just grabbed my heart whenever I was praying over this theme that you guys uh, were uh, given for this conference. Praise the Lord. I just, uh, I kept thinking the movement of God from garden to garden, that, that movement of God that bringing about his word. Your theme text, Isaiah 61, 11, for as the earth brings forth its bud, as the garden causes the things that are sown in it to spring forth, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. I'm really like the Good News Translation version of that. It says, as surely as seeds sprout and grow, the sovereign Lord will save his people and all the nations will praise him. And the Neville translation, it's a done deal. It's a done deal. Now, I don't know about you, but I am in awe at the movement of God through the ages to bring about his promises to fulfill his word. The more I study his word, the more I've read his word, amen, the more I've looked, at, looked through the Old Testament, studied all the way through into the New Testament, amen, looked at history, it blows my mind, amen. It, uh, it only serves to, to build my faith and to strengthen my confidence, amen, that we're right on time and we're right where we're supposed to be. Hallelujah. God's in control. He is moving to bring about all of his promises. And in light of his track record, there's three things I want to bring to the table. In light of his track record, there's three things I want you to consider that we need to do. We need to trust the promiser. We need to trust the plan. And we need to trust the process. So think with me quickly about the trusting the promiser. The big test in the Garden of Eden, folks, was trust. It wasn't a moral temptation. Amen. There was no sexual immorality at the fall. Amen. They didn't smoke the plants. <laughs> they weren't carving porn into the rocks. It wasn't any thing that we think of in terms of sin, amen. It, it was not a moral issue or a moral temptation. It was a trust issue. Would they trust God's character enough to obey? And of course, we know the answer to that. 
our first parents, even in the atmosphere of perfection, began to believe that God had some ulterior motive. The serpent had whispered to Eve. He said, ah, precious one, God's really trying to cheat you. He knows that the day you eat of it, you're going to become like God's. And so they began to doubt. Amen. They believed that what God had warned would happen, you'll die, was not really what he meant. In other words, they doubted his word. It has always been about trust. It's always been, it, it always comes down to that, trust. Trust has to do with the character and the strength of the promiser. It's why Abraham was honored as the father of faith, because he trusted. He faltered a few times along the way, but he trusted enough to obey. Abraham trusted in the promiser and his ability to bring the promise to pass. Romans 4, 20 through 22 says, His faith did not leave him, and he did not doubt God's promise. His faith filled him with power, and he gave praise to God. He was absolutely sure that God would be able to do what he had promised. That is why Abraham, through faith, was accepted as righteous by God. The fullness of the promise to Abraham was not fully realized in his lifetime. But the seed was. We know that Isaac, the promised child, was born. After Abraham went by the way of the grave, the Lord said to Isaac, in Genesis 26, 24, he said, I am the God of your father, Abraham. He said, do not be afraid, for I am with you and will bless you. I will multiply your descendants, and they will become great. I will do this because of my promise to Abraham, my servant. In this journey of faith that you and I are on, we just will not always see everything that we hope to see. In fact, life and circumstance, if we're going to be honest in here, life and circumstance often mock the credibility of the promiser. We prayed and they died. They had the promise, amen, they had the covenant, amen. They didn't see the full fulfillment, amen. I mean, Abraham died, and not everything was complete. Moses died, not all was complete. David died, not all was complete. The prophets died when the promise was still a long way off, and not all was complete. The disciples died while waiting for the promised return. But they died trusting that the promiser would come through even if it wasn't in their generation. You see, folks, tonight our confidence is based on the character of God. Amen. And the character of God is that he keeps his word. He keeps his word. Hallelujah. His promises never fail. Amen. And even if we haven't seen the fulfillment or you haven't seen the fulfillment of the things that you believe that God has promised you. Amen. I'm here to tell you my confidence and your confidence needs to be in the promiser. Hallelujah. And he keeps his word. I don't care what it looks like. Hebrews 6.18 says, so God has given both his promise and his oath. These two things are unchangeable because it is impossible for God to lie. Therefore, we who have fled to him for refuge can have great confidence as we hold to the hope that lies before us. Hallelujah. Joshua stood up and told the people of Israel after they'd gone into the promised land. I love this one. Hallelujah. He says, not a single one of all the good promises the Lord had given to the family of Israel was left unfulfilled. Everything he had spoken came true. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. So our confidence Amen. Is in, not in what we see. Our confidence is in the character of God. He keeps his word. Our confidence is in the power of God to follow through on his promises. The power of God to be able to pull it off. 
Isaiah 55, 10 and 11 says the rain and the snow come down from the heavens and stay on the ground to water the earth. They cause the grain to grow, producing seed for the farmer and bread for the hungry. It is the same with my word. I send it out and it always produces fruit. It will accomplish all I want it to and it will, prom it will prosper everywhere I send it. Hallelujah. 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 When his word goes forth, amen, it's coming back. It's flourishing. Amen. You know, I hate to admit this, but I've made a few promises in my life that I wasn't able to fulfill. A circumstance prevented me from fulfilling it. A, a physical uh, situation prevented me from fulfilling it. A financial situation prevented me from keeping my word, even though I was sincere when I promised and there were a few times in my life, I'm ashamed to say, that I made careless promises in the heat of the moment, amen, and actually forgot the promise. Actually forgot. But not so with God. We used to sing a chorus when I was a kid. It said, if Jesus said it, I believe it. His word cannot lie. If it's written in the Bible, I'll believe it till I die. Though the mountains be removed, and cast into the sea, God's word will live forever, even through eternity. Hallelujah. Now maybe, maybe someone in this room tonight needs to shift your focus off of your disappointments and the perplexing circumstances that you are facing. And you need to refocus on the goodness, the wisdom, and the power of the promiser. Hallelujah. Secondly, you need to trust the plan. No debate. God has a plan. And it's a good plan. He told Israel in Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster to give you a future and a hope. Folks, when they were given that word, they weren't exactly living in a pleasant situation. Amen. They were in bondage to an enemy, and actually they were told by the Lord through the prophet Jeremiah that it was going to be a 70-year stint before things would begin to look up. It's like you're going into this negative situation, and you're going to be there for a while. False prophets were countering that, trying to tell the people, oh, this is going to pass by quickly, but those prophets were lying. In the midst of all of these contradicting messages, God tells him, nope, you're here for a long time, but it's part of the plan. And the plan is good. The plan is good. I've got a good end. He said, I know the purposes that I have for you. They're good. The psalmist wrote in Psalms 40 and verse 5, O oh Lord, my God, you have performed many wonders for us. Your plans for us are too numerous to list. You have no equal. If I tried to recite all your wonderful deeds, I would never come to the end of them. Hallelujah. God's got a plan. Someone in this building tonight needs to remember that God has a plan for you. You, individually. Yes, we fit into the larger, redemptive plan of God, but God is intimately involved in your life and your future. Someone needs to be reminded of that. Sometimes it looks like we are nothing more, honestly, it looks like we're nothing more than pawns on a game board. Or that there's only a select few that God has this special plan for that fits into the big plan. Uh, plan. And the rest of us are just kind of part, you know, we're swept into this movement. But folks, that is, that is a lie from the pit of hell. He knew you in your mother's womb. He knows where you are located in time and in location. Your life is not a random accident just swept up in the movement. Part of the blessing of having this wonderful word of God that you and I have, the record of God's movement in the earth, is the testimony of God's power to bring all things to the desired end, and that includes you and me. 
I loved the testimony of Brother Ryan, you know, and, and how that the enemy had, uh, had hijacked his life for about 20 years of his life. And, and I was talking to his mom, uh, Sister Lanny, and how that she, she knew that there was a prom promise. There was a calling on his life, and yet there was a, a long time coming. Amen. But God fulfilled that promise. And wow, what a powerful way God fulfilled that promise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I mean, we don't understand all the parts and the pieces of the plan. Amen. God knew that Ryan would have the, 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 the challenges and the temptations and the crises that he had in, and the struggles he had in his own life during that season. Amen. But God had a plan and God brought it to fruition. Folks, my favorite verse that I have to quote to myself quite often is Philippians 1 6. It says, And I am certain that God, who began a good work within you, will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. Hallelujah. Folks, I'm here to tell you, we've got to trust that there's a plan and that it is being worked out even when we cannot make sense of everything that is happening around us. God's got a plan. Hallelujah. And finally, I told you I was going to preach fast. Hallelujah. Finally, you need to trust the process. And this point cannot be skipped. The truth is that there's a process involved in the plan of God. The plan has a beginning point, And then there's a lot of stuff that takes place to get it to completion. It's called the process. Creation itself testifies of process. All that God created has a beginning point, and then it goes through the transitional changes to bring it to fruition or whatever its, it is, its culmination is supposed to be. The giant redwood tree, amen, begins with a seed. Amen. And the years and years and years of climate and change and, and weather and all of the things that causes that to become what it is designed to be. The butter butterfly that begins as a larvae and the river that begins from a rain cloud. Everything involves a process. And until Jesus comes, you and I, you and I, hallelujah, are in the in-between we're in the in the process stage. That's where we're at, in the process phase. And this process involves time, circumstances, people, both good and bad, contradictions, wrestling matches with God, the devil, and ourselves. That's part of, these things are part of the process. You can't skip those classes. Think with me about time for a minute. God's promise in the Garden of Eden took approximately 2,100 years to be fulfilled at the cross. Approximately 2,100 years for that, for the, from the Garden to the cross. Now we are another 2,200 years from the fulfillment on the cross, and God is still working his plan. Amen. Hallelujah. Clearly, time is one of the primary components that God works through. We don't especially appreciate that because, well, you and I, we're on the clock. We are finite, and he is infinite. So we find it frustrating that it's not going to all happen in our lifetime. I know that it's coming close. We see the signs of the times. Amen. But the word of God tells us. I'm going to read it to you. Amen. Time to God is not the way that it is to us. 2 Peter 3, 3 through 9. Above all, you must understand that the last days, mockers will multiply, chasing, uh, chasing after their evil desires. They will say, so what about this promise of his coming? Our ancestors are dead and buried, yet everything is still the same as it was since the beginning of time until now. But they conveniently overlook that from the beginning... The heavens and the earth were created by God's word. He spoke in the dry ground, separated from the waters. Then long afterward, long afterward, did you guys get that? It's in the word. Did anybody catch that? 
Long afterward, he destroyed the world with a tremendous flood by those very waters. And now, by the same powerful word, the heavens and the earth are reserved for fire, being kept for judgment day, when all the godly will perish. So, dear friends, don't let this one thing escape your notice. A single day counts like a thousand years to the Lord Yahweh, and a thousand years counts as one day. This means that contrary to man's perspective, the Lord is not late with his promise to return, as some measure lightness, but rather his delay simply reveals his loving patience towards you because he does not want any to perish, but all to come to repentance. Hallelujah. So we're like, Lord, how much longer? How much longer? Man, Lord, you see the evil in our nation. You see the evil in our world. Lord, come now. Amen. But have you ever stopped to think if he comes right now? Amen. That one person that you've been praying for that is not saved yet, that they will go to hell. Aren't you glad that Jesus didn't come until after you got saved? Hallelujah. We, we, I mean, we, we, he only he knows when that is. Hallelujah. But, but he's working within his time frame and not ours. Amen. Getting impatient. Amen. Folks, God is working not only through the redemptive history. Amen. The coming of the Lord. Hallelujah. The, the culmination of the promise. Hallelujah. But he's working in your life and he's working through time. And some of you are getting nervous because you're getting old. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll be 70 this year. I'm just like, whoa, Lord. Lord. How much more can I get? How much more can we do? You better hurry. There's a lot of things yet. You know what? I've, I've relaxed. Relax. Hallelujah. He's got this. Praise the Lord. He's going to work through time. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. In fact, I, then I'll just drop this one in, and it's not even in my notes. Praise the Lord. Some of you older ministers, you really need to be preparing the next generation. You need to get yourself backing up a little bit and move others forward that are younger. Praise the Lord. That is what something God put heavily on my heart. Amen. That, you know what? He might not come in my generation. Amen. While I'm still alive. Hallelujah. What's going to happen to our churches? What's going to happen in your family? Amen. Are you putting things in order and so that the next generation is ready to move forward? Hallelujah. And can move into the things that God has for them. Praise the Lord. That was free. Amen. It wasn't even in the notes. Hallelujah. But that was for someone to, God is working through time and we would be wise to figure that out. Amen. And to be strategic in how we plan our own time. Amen. He is working through circumstance through the ages. He's been at work through droughts and famine, political changes, wars, language and communication changes for you and me. Amen. It might involve unexpected changes, financial challenges, Losses, delays, hardships brought on by things beyond your control. No matter the circumstance, God is working. God's working. He's working through people, both good and bad. Amen. He was working his plan through Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Esther, Ruth, Pharaoh, Judas, Caiaphas. Amen. Yeah, there were some bad dudes in there too. Amen. And the Lord knew it. Amen. They were part of, of his plan. Amen. Little did they know that as they're evil, God turned it for good. And there's a song like that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God takes those things. Amen. He, let me tell you something. Every element is put to work in God's sovereign movement. He works through contradictions. He works through trials, resistances, defeats, setbacks, divisions, conflicts, persecution, defectors, betrayals. These are hard ones. These, these things have been hard for me in my mind, in my life, in my walk with God, and pastoring even. Those kind of things have been hard for me to reconcile in my thinking because I want everything peaceful and everything in unity and get the whole flock together. Amen. And let's just all be one big happy family. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Can't we all just get along? Praise the Lord. But if you take a look backwards, it appears that God uses even these things that offend our senses of right and wrong and black and white. He uses the things that, that we think, well, that can be this. 
how, that, that's not right. But somehow God still gets in the mix and brings forth his purposes. Amen. So just calm down and relax, you guys. If you can't make everything perfect, praise the Lord. And finally, he works through the wrestling matches with God, the devil, and ourselves. Some of your wrestling may actually be with the Lord. If you are thick-headed like Jonah or Balaam, God may choose to get through to you in a dramatic way, a whale or a donkey. God wrestled with Jacob, leaving him with a limp. But it was a point of breakthrough for Jacob. Maybe the thing that has left you weakened was really God working to demonstrate his grace and his power in you in ways that were humbling. Sometimes we have to wrestle the devil. Yeah, we do have some fights with the devil. Had a few rounds with him myself. Amen. That hateful accuser of the brethren and the one who looks for every opportunity to hijack circumstances causing us to doubt the good plan of God. But most often, folks, our wrestling matches are with ourselves. Our flesh, our pride, our impatience, our presumption, our arrogance, Hallelujah. our self-righteousness. You can fill in the blanks that might prick your heart tonight. And you know what that flesh battle is that's unique to your own life. Whatever is happening right now in your life, even the heartbreaking stuff, there is a process that is in progress. If you could just see that. If you could get a glimpse of that, be reminded of that, amen. We get so consumed, amen. But you need to look at the big plan. You need to look at God's big plan. Let me, let me just encourage you. God is there. He is at work in your life, your ministry, your church. Nothing is wasted, folks, in God's ecosystem. God recycles everything, the good and the bad the negative and the positive. Amen. He's the master ecologist. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Romans says all things work together for the good of those that are the called according to his purpose. And God is not a liar. God's not a liar. Hallelujah. And the bottom line is Isaiah 55, 8, my thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord, and my ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. Folks, and I'm closing with this, the ways of our Lord are beyond finding out. They're beyond finding out. I remember, and I know we have several in, in here, Sister Lanny, amen, that, for one that has recently lost her husband, and I lost my husband 26 years ago. And I remember not thinking how anything, that made no sense to me whatsoever. No sense to me whatsoever. But God gave me such a re revelation of his character, and I won't even give you that whole testimony. But throughout that whole process, the, ho the Holy Spirit, the only thing I could pray was, God, you're so good. God, you're so good. And I realized later it was the Holy Spirit that was revealing God's character that I needed to know for that critical moment in life. What didn't look good to me, I knew in the deepest part of my spirit that God was good, and that someday I'd understand. It didn't look good, didn't feel good, but I knew that God was good. Hallelujah. And I got to the point where my prayer quite often would consist of saying, God, you are, you are so good, and your wisdom is beyond finding out. And, and, I, and I wasn't... I, I was, I w it was a revelation that the Holy Spirit put into me during that time of crisis. I knew beyond any shadow of a doubt, even though I couldn't explain it and time had not gone by, I won't even know until we get in, into eternity, but I trusted in the wisdom of God in taking my husband home at that time. I knew he was good. He wouldn't do anything. Good. There was, there's nothing evil that comes down from the Father of Lights. Hallelujah. Every good and perfect gift comes down. And I knew that he was wise. I knew his character. 
I knew his character. Hallelujah. And I'm here to just encourage you guys this evening, amen, whatever it is that you're going through, you need to trust the promiser. You need to trust his character and his power to bring that plan to fruition. You need to trust the plan and you need to trust the process. You can't bypass the process, but God's going to get us there. He's going to get us there. Would you stand to your feet this evening? Hallelujah. Lord, we love you and thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Lift your hands and begin to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, you are good. Hallelujah. Would you just begin to call out those, some of those character traits of God that you need in your life tonight? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of you need to remember that he's all-powerful. Some of you need to remember tonight that he's all righteous, that he's just, amen, hallelujah, that he's perfect in all of his ways. Some of you need to remember that he's a good God, hallelujah, that he's wise, hallelujah, that he's merciful, that he's merciful, that he's gracious, hallelujah, that he's long-suffering, hallelujah, hallelujah. Whatever you need, hallelujah, ask the Holy Spirit to pour that into your heart right now. Amen. Begin to, begin to extol him, amen, his characteristics, who he is, hallelujah, hallelujah. As you begin to do that, folks, amen, praise the Lord, some of those heavy burdens, some of those things that got a grip on you, amen, they're going to, those grip, that grip has to loosen, that grip has to loosen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You need to get a revelation of who God is right now. Hallelujah. You get a revelation of his character. Hallelujah. We get our eyes so focused on us. We get our eyes so focused on the circumstance. You need to turn your eyes to Jesus. Hallelujah. And see who he is.